Hi you guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and today we will be talking about abusive relationships. I will tell y'all some personal things about my own personal life and the things that I went through in abusive relationship that I was in and how I got out of the relationship and what made me get out of the relationship. I know there's a lot of women that tolerate certain things and a lot of times we tolerate those things because we are we're, we, we don't know what we want and we don't value ourselves. Either way, um, I met this guy back in 2000 and I want to say maybe 10 and um, me and started dating and we dated for about two years. He was a good guy. Um, he did literally everything for me. Um, we went out on dates, um, kept gas in my car, did everything together, took trips, um, attended each other's fa family functions. Literally everything together. And don't get me wrong, there were signs throughout the relationship. He never, you know, would physically put his hands on me um, at one point. Otherwise, if he was that bad, I wouldn't have stayed the first two years. Um, so, like I said, we were together for a total of four years. Um, two years into the relationship, I started to see um, a different... A different person um, I didn't know who I was who I was living with like I didn't know him anymore um, there were several incidents where um, you know he was verbally abusive um, mentally abusive and physically abusive I remember the first couple of times he brought me around certain people um, and introduced me a lot of them was like what you doing with him? You know, what you doing with him? You're like, too good to be with him. And I just would laugh and, you know, just kind of laugh it off. Not really thinking much because I felt like they was joking. But at the end of the relationship, I reflected back over things. I'm like, they was trying to tell me something. Why wasn't I listening to them? But anyway, so he had a, a real bad drinking problem. So every time he would drink, he would get very violent. Which, as I said in the beginning, it was nothing like that. Um, it started whenever, whenever he, it started whenever I started realizing he would have me to come and get him because he didn't have a car. So before we moved in together, I used to go and get him. So he stayed about thirty minutes away from me. So I would go and pick him up and you know bring him, um, bring him down here, and um, we would chill the weekend together. So that's how I first started out. And as I said, you know, people would say little things. I just kind of ignored it, didn't think much of it. And then one night, I remember him calling me probably about 3 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Um, and wanted me to come get him. He said he had been in a fight. So I went to go get him, and his hand was broken. Um, and he was extremely toxicated. I had called his mom and told her what was going on. That, you know, he had been in a fight you know and everything and she asked me was he drunk and I told her yeah that he was and she told me um, well to watch what I say to him and I was like okay you know okay didn't think nothing else about it we got to the house you know and the next morning I ended up taking him to the ER and of course yeah his hand was broken anyways fast forward when we moved in together, that's when he became really controlling. So we dated off and on for about two years, and then we finally moved in together. Um, when we moved in, it became it got to a point where, um, like I said, he didn't have a car, so he would use my car. Um, I drove him to work every day, so I got up, you know, extra early because I didn't have to be to work till eight, and he had to be um, at work at seven. So I would get up extra early, take him to work, and then come back to work. Well, I didn't have to be to work to nine, and then I would come back to work, and then I would sit out there in the parking lot until it was time for me to go back to work. So, the times that he would want to go do things, he would try to start an argument or something like that. Um, 
And then I could have been just one and got him. Say I get off on a Friday before we move together. Say I got off on a Friday um, and I brought him down. By that night, if he, he would be on his phone like all, literally all day long and it would hurt me. Um, but if, when he was ready to go and it was time that I would go and pick him up and then he would start an argument so that I can take him back home. Um, so... He started an argument with me, so we was arguing, and I took him home. So on the way of me taking him home, he keep throwing my car in park while I'm driving. We end up on the main road, and at this time, I'm just, I'm over it. I'm just tired, and I'm like, just take the car. You can go. You can go. Just take the car. Um, I probably, maybe, probably about a good 10 minutes from home at this point. Which I didn't mind walking because at that point I was just fed up. I hopped out the car. He hopped out the car. I started running. He chased me. And he chased me and he and he fell on top of me. When he fell on top of me, um, it broke my finger, my pinky. And my pinky finger was literally laid. Disregard my nails. I go get them done Friday. Um, my pinky finger was literally laid over my three fingers. So when I fell, I didn't feel it at first. But... As I got up and I looked at my hand, I realized it was broken. So we instantly went to the emergency room. Of course, he's apologizing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so I didn't get to take him. He didn't go home. Um, and they asked me what happened at the emergency room. Of course, I lied. I said I fell, which I did fall. But if he wasn't chasing me and wasn't that close up on me, then I wouldn't have failed. He was... He would say things to me that end up really lowering my self-esteem. And I was making real good money. Um, I never forget my daughter's birthday. I took her and one of my cousins to the mall. He kept calling me and saying he was hungry. Food was in the house. All they had to do was fix him a sandwich or fix him a pizza or something until I got home. I told him, I was like, well, I'm coming. You know, I grabbed something on my way to the house. You know, you just um, go ahead and fix you something quick to eat. Upset. He's upset. Pissed off. I come home, and I got a big hole in my room door. Once I remind you, this is not my house. I am renting this house from somebody. I come home, and I got a big hole in the door. Now I'm upset. Because me and my kids had a good day and to come home to debt. And he's angry. But he's still in denial because he he swore up and down that he did not punch the dough. So I'm like, who punched it in? Because you're the only one here. I knew then that I couldn't have anything with him. Because... Who wants to be with somebody that every time you get mad, you're messing up the things that that we're paying for to have. The nice things that we, we have, that we worked hard for. I knew then that I couldn't be with him. Um, that it wasn't going to work, but I still could not leave. So, it was times I wanted to go get my hair done. If I was gone too long, um, I came back and he's pulled all my tracks out of my hair. Um, there was times where he wanted to go through my phone and he's actually bit me to make me release my phone. Even though it wasn't in there, I don't go through your phone. You don't want me going through your phone and you want to go through my phone. I had teeth marks in my arm. But I remember this one particular time I caught him. We had the little Vox messenger thing on our phone. And he didn't know that on, on the little Vox thing that you could track somebody's location when you messaging them. So I messaged him. He had my car. I messaged him um, because he told me he was going around the block to one of his homeboy's house. So I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, one of my kids had left their book bag in the car. So I was calling him to try to get the book bag. And he went us on the phone from the regular phone. So I walked around the block and obviously the car wasn't there he wasn't there so that's when I boxed him and he boxed back and said he was at his homeboy house now I didn't even tell him that I knew 
that he wasn't over there. I just said, okay. I called my cousin to take me to go get my car. So I get over there, and he wouldn't give me my keys. And he ended up hopping in the car and following me and my cousin and tried to hit us in my car, hit her car. I got to the house. Um, I got to the house. I knew he was going to eventually come. Um, I don't. I wanted to call the police, but I did think about his kids, and that's not an excuse because what he did to me wasn't right. What he was doing wasn't right. So when I got home, um, I plugged up the iron at the foot of my bed because I knew when he came that we were going to be fighting, and he wasn't just going to just leave. So I came and I plugged up the iron, and he come in. We arguing. And um, he come in and we arguing. And he, um, he had me on the bed and he was punching me in my, um, my legs and my thighs. Somehow I got up and I ended up running into the kitchen. And at this time, I grabbed the broomstick, and he came towards me, and I repeatedly hit him with the broomstick. And when I did that, he hauled off and hit me directly in my left eye. And I instantly fell. So my nose was bleeding, and I had blood coming out. out of It left a scar under my eye, so I had blood coming, you know, from up under my eye. So, um, in which he went and let me look in the mirror to see what it looked like. He just got me ice and made me get in the bed and kept apologizing that he was sorry um, for what he did. Um, I ended up missing days from work, and then when I did go to work, I tried to avoid family members and relatives, so I wouldn't have to tell them what actually happened to me. Um, of course, I lied and made up an excuse of what happened and never really truly told no one until I was out of the relationship. Um, what I was going through and what kind of abuse I endured. Um, so I stayed in the house um, for a, a couple of days, but I had to go back to work. And then I had to answer people questions. And I think a lot of people already knew, um, especially a lot of my, my close cousins, they kind of knew, but they wouldn't say nothing because I didn't say nothing. But I'll never forget the one incident which actually made me leave um, because I wasn't scared of them anymore. And I remember plugging the iron up again whenever I knew he was going to come home and there was going to be problems. I plugged the iron up and he had me pinned on the bed and he was hitting me again. He would always try to hit me in places where nobody could actually see. So he was hitting me in my thighs and he was um, hitting me in my ribs. And for some some way, I got my, my feet planted in his chest. And um, when I got my feet planted in his chest, I, I hollered for my daughter to go and get my brother because we stayed next door. And I, I was hollering for her to go get him, go get him. And she, I heard her run out the door. And by that time, I pushed my feet up against his chest and got him off of me. And I bent down and grabbed the iron and I stuck it to his stomach. When I ran out the house... Um, of course he's cussing, bitch you, bitch you burnt me, you know, and I run out the house, and then when I run out the house, um, I run around the car, and I'm running around the car, and he's chasing me, and then my brother pops up, and he's like, you put your hands on my sister, and now he's copping, please, like, no, I didn't touch her, I ain't do nothing to her, we was arguing, I won't never put my hands, no, I told my brother, you know, I went and have something, Kaya, I told my brother, you know, I wouldn't have sent my baby to come and get you if he hadn't actually did anything to me. Besides, I never told nobody or didn't tell my brothers because at the time, I was still talking to them. It wasn't until I knew I was really ready to leave that I got people involved because I, went, I didn't want to get nobody involved and then the next week we back together or the next week I'm back talking to him. Um, the reason why it was so hard for me to leave was because I was, I did fear being alone. 
so I was codependent. Um, I didn't. My self esteem was low, um, especially after everything that I went through with him. Um, it was extremely low. So I didn't really know how to love myself. I didn't know what it felt like to be loved. So in my mind, um, I know it didn't feel good, but that was the only thing that I felt like I knew. I felt like at one point that it was going to get back to how it used to be the first two years because the last two years I did not know who he was. That was nice that I thought about literally hurting him. And when it got to that point, it was going to be either me or him. And I felt like it wasn't going to be me. So I knew then I had to do something. I had to make some changes. Like that wasn't going to work. My brother told me, like, after my brother jumped on him and beat him, he told me, like, I don't want him back here. Now, don't get me wrong. I talked to him a couple times on the phone. He was trying. But I did not go back and get him and that day I remember telling him what you gonna do what you gonna hit me like you like you always do I wasn't scared of him no more and he knew I wasn't scared of him anymore and leaving him was the best decision that I could have made my children didn't like him he always showed favoritism and even when he brought his children, I would do stuff as a family, as a whole. He would do stuff like take his daughter to the park and, and ask me, am I coming to take my own children? But see, I was the type that when I did something with mine, I did something with, with his kids. Whenever I did my girl's hair, I did his daughter hair. that I didn't have to um, so once I was by the time I was by the time I ended that relationship I had lost literally everything um, I had lost uh, my job I was behind on my rent um, I didn't know who I was he had pulled me away from my family and my friends so I didn't really talk and deal with people like I used to um, Everywhere I walked in the house, it always reminded me of him. Every time I looked at the hole in the door, I was reminded of him. Every time I looked in the mirror, I was reminded of him um, and what he did to me. When I looked at the bite marks on my arm, I was reminded of him. And I, I hated him. But I knew I had to forgive him. Not for him, but for me. Because I didn't know whether I'm sitting there hating him for all the stuff that he put me through and all the stuff that he did. He was somewhere well living his life. Now don't get me wrong, he messaged me and I told him like we don't, years later, you know, it may have been, maybe about two years ago, you know, he messaged me. And I told him like we don't have anything to talk about. He apologized for what he did. And I, I this time I really believe his apology was so sincere, but it's nothing in me would allow me to go back to him because of everything I went through. But I forgave him, like I said, for me, so that I wouldn't be walking around with that on me every day. So I can learn to look in the mirror and feel like I'm beautiful again and know that I'm beautiful with all the scars that he left me with. It was things like that that made me want to heal because I met a nice man probably about six months after and I knew I had to heal myself for him. You do not have to be with anyone that do not treat you well. Abuse is awful. Any kind of abuse. Mental, physical, emotional. Any kind of abuse is not good. Learning to release people and not hold on to things that you know you should have been let go. Release things on a daily basis. That's what I had to do. I had to release things every day. Like the stuff I ha that happened yesterday, I couldn't bring all that with me today. Otherwise, today 
flesh yesterday would have been too overwhelming for me, which would have messed with my anxiety. Don't settle for less. If you are in an abusive relationship, in any of those forms, and somebody is not being nice to you, please speak up and let somebody know. Because a lot of these situations turn into something a whole lot worse than mine. I mean, I suffer from, you know, financial damage. I suffer from emotional and physical damage. But some people don't get to fully suffer. They suffer and then incident happened where their life has been taken from them. So if someone is being abusive to you, do not stay there. Let someone know. Speak out. Leave. So find resources. There's people around and there's organizations that's out here that help people and women that's going through um, any kind of abuse. I still feel like I left out some of the stuff in my story because I'm already at 22 minutes. And if I have, then I'll do a part two to go a little bit more in details because it is a little warm out here and I don't want to run out my gas out. Gas just went up. You feel me? Just went up. But I want to want you guys to leave on a positive note and know that the best thing that I could have ever done was leave that relationship. And yes, it was hard. I still talked to him probably about a week or two afterwards. We didn't see each other, but we conversated. And it was, I was being dry, but I was so used to hearing him. And then eventually I got to a point where I just wouldn't answer the phone no more. And then he stopped calling, you know, and then I was okay. I didn't rush into no a, another relationship. I took time to focus on me. Even though I wasn't completely healed, but I took time to focus on me. But the space that I'm at now, after leaving that relationship and going through some other things later on, which I will tell you guys about, so please hit the like button and subscribe because I will be back with more personal information. And it's gonna help you guys because if I can help one person or if this resonates with one person, then I have done my job Don't let no one make you feel less than who you are. Don't let no one make you feel like you're not the best version of you. Do not give them your power. Take your power back. When you learn to control your emotions and when you understand you is nothing no one can say or do to knock you down. If you know you're not good at something, somebody telling you you're not good at it is not going to bother you because you know you don't do that well. Learn yourself and don't give away your power. And if you feel like somebody's trying to control you, or they vibe does not match well with yours, remove yourself. You have the right to do that. Until next time, you guys, live, love,